to the big read. Let me explain. <laughs> I've been really trying to think about how I can integrate astrology in any meaningful way with the tarot. Um, so we're just going to look at the transits and I'm going to assign the tarot cards um, by the planet and then also associate the uh, astrological sign, the tarot card, and break them down and then kind of look at them. We already kind of know what the transit planets are doing. And then uh, my, what I've been experimenting with is then uh, when I pull personal uh, cards uh, for us. And, you know, you could look at this. All of this is really just trying to get a good idea what's going on in the sky with the gods, you know. In the Greeks, it would all be the gods above us. Here's the, here's the little people here. Here I have the court cards separated. If we want to, if, if we want to talk to someone in the court, if I feel it necessary, we'll we'll go there. Um, I think primarily we'll work with these, uh, you know, minor arcana. If there's any questions, so we're starting. Uh, we have a bowl too. I mean, basically the the uh, first uh, quadrant and the last quadrant are kind of what's empty. And all the emphasis is uh, uh, from the IC to the MC uh, through the DC. Um, so what is that to me? Um, what's really being emphasized is kind of the meat of life. You know, uh, that there is, you know, where you're the meat of life. You know, I'm 62. Uh, I'm not saying it's over or anything. It's like, but that's not where we're in there driving and you know, the hustling families typically. <laughs> God bless you if you're 62 and you're doing that way. You're my hero. And it makes me tired just thinking about it. But, you know, um, this is that kind of energy um, that's uh, really about life and living, you know. Uh, and it, it's not as a contemplative, you know. Uh, we'll get over into the 12th house and the AC. It's not like that kind of energy. Um, so... That's where we're starting, and we're starting with Mars, really, and Sagittarius, just off the south node. I'm big Sagittarius. Uh, my Juno asteroid is at one degree Sagittarius, so uh, just yesterday, uh, Mars was exact there. Um, something, but comment, it really helps the channel. If you can leave comments, I would mind help the channel. If I get to 1,000, we can open up this live, up, started this whole reading. Because I was thinking, I'm going to have to be using the computer soon and doing the live readings. Think about how I want to integrate it. And I wasn't really happy with it, the way it was going. So I think this will allow me to use this like as a dashboard and then do readings off of this. I think my rising sign is going to help you the way that's going to have to go. Um, but you see, then this is in Sagittarius, which is temperance. And you have the sun, conveniently the sun card in tarot. Um, um, in Sagittarius, you know, I should know. I was looking at it, it's my birthday. I swear to God, it's the day. Oh, yeah, it's your birthday. I know what day it is because I just date time. It, it, it changes every day, it's so hard to keep track. Um, I can keep track of the plants a lot easier, you know. But you know, that's some amazing energy there. And Mars is bringing up the bottom of this bowl, the moon is over here, uh, the leading the bowl now. It's now moved into the, you know, uh, front. It will be for a week or something. It'll like be going through that empty area of the chart. I'll do the 11th, uh, 12th, 1st, 2nd, 3rd houses of the chart. Um, so uh, maybe taking our feelings a little deeper, you know. Um, and then in Capricorn, um, you now have Mercury getting up in Capricorn, represented by the devil card, Capricorn. Uh, you also have Pluto, which is represented by judgment, and you have the Empress. You know, and, and look, you know, I, I love this deck too. Uh, ethereal Visions, Illuminated Tarot, because, you know, it's almost like you just have to look at it. You don't really have to know anything about tarot. You just kind of get a feeling from that, you know. And here you have Mercury, Pluto, and Venus, you know, right on Mercury, right on the uh, full moon, it's going to be right there. I mean, this is huge. And you sort of get the feel of it, I think, just by looking at this. You know, the possibilities. 
particularly right now. Of course, in a minute, you know, Mercury's moving. It'll be uh, ahead, you know, uh, of Venus for sure, because they'll cross each other. That'll be an interesting day. But I was kind of conceiving this as kind of a daily reading. Um, and, you know, they would change, you know, the inner planets, the moon would be moving uh, constantly. And so it'd be a good way to just keep up with transits. And I, I did it. I did it without this explanation. It was about 20 minutes. I did it a few times. But the time that it took and worked it was around 20 minutes, but uh, with a minimal kind of explanation as of what, you know, what I'm doing. But I think it just kind of becomes obvious as I do it. And then... Um, and with the star card over in Aquarius, you have the world, which represents Saturn. And you have the wheel of fortune, <laughs> Jupiter. And again, it's intuitively, no understanding, put your seven-year-old up here. Honey, how do you feel about that right there? Sweetheart, what do you got to say? Paint me a picture. What does that make you feel? And, and it's just, it's pretty darn evocative um, that something's going on. You got to see uh, Jupiter's now taking the lead. I mean, everybody's going forward, but Jupiter's hauling ass at just about 27 degrees now. Um, it's uh, square in the sun, you know, square in my sun. My sun's at 25 uh, um, degrees where the sun is today. So it's a two degree orb, and the sun will be catching up to that. So it's in there for the next three or four days with the sun, um, actually, I'm sorry, sextile to um, the sun. So I think this is really good. And I was thinking about that too, even with Venus here at 25 degrees, um, it might be one of the better days for Venus in a lot of this, uh, which, I, cause I think it's kind of tough in energy. And when you see like the devil here too, I mean, in judgment, right there and here comes the magician remember the magician's moving through quick so the magician's like yeah excuse me pluto excuse me oh and it feels up the empress because it's fucking on pluto sorry now it's going you got the devil here it's like this is i think there's a lot of weird stuff you know going on um, i honestly i'm old and stuff but i swear to god like if i was a woman i wouldn't even for the next well until march <laughs> do not leave your drink unattended <laughs> It's just it, it's just some difficult energy going on here and dark shadow stuff and everybody working it out. And why I like to do a love relationship channels because we work it out on each other. Hope we love in the most you know highest vibrational manner, but not always. Particularly when Pluto Venus is involved, you know. And does it mean that everybody's going to be raped? Everybody's going to have some horrible betrayal from their lover or discover some deep dark family secret that's shameful uh or something no but a lot of a lot of us will a lot of us will something uh, out of this pluto uh here the other big one in the sky is always with saturn and uranus we'll see they're square and that's getting tighter you can get me going how that's hitting me but you know you know, when you think about what the star is in tarot, um, you know, your hopes and dreams and wishes. It's not just Jupiter, it's Saturn. Saturn's going direct now. Saturn rewards you with responsibility, but something durable also. But typically, it will reward you with responsibility and learning and something good for you. Jupiter uh, will typically reward you with an opportunity, but they're in here next to the star, hopes, dreams. Really, this is Manifestation City. I'm feeling this. The tower's coming in. I, I, honestly, I was kind of I, I I have the hardest time with Mars being a tower because I want to think Uranus, but it's the lower octave of Uranus, you know. But as an astrologer, what you look for as an I was as an activator, who, the trigger, the finger that pulls the trigger is Mars. So you look at everything else. I mean, whether you're looking at death chart or anything, you know, you're looking at uh, medical stuff. I mean, I'm, I I don't do medical, but for myself, I research a lot on my own with significant events I had. It's just uh, absolutely astrology is amazing, amazing, you know. Um, but you, Mars is that trigger. So, and it's moving pretty fast. It'll be changing through here, through this reading. 
I mean, as the days go by. So there would hardly be a day it would be the same. Now the moon does stay every two and a half days, so you may have a few days where this would be the same. You know, and then Neptune, the hanged man, and then the moon represents um, Pisces. And then you have Uranus, the fool, and then you have is in Taurus, the hair pack. You know, it, 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 you know, the hangman and the moon sort of go together, you know, because the moon, it, the hangman's always that dreamy energy of, you know, what, you know, when you're hanging, you're hanging upside down, you know, it's kind of like a, an altered state of consciousness. It makes sense for that in that regard, being that it's Neptune. So it's like this altered state of consciousness. And the moon is that, again, that dreamy, uh, half asleep, half awake, twilight area things that are unknown things that are unclear um right now at 20 degrees going direct i can tell you personally it's been tear my ass up it's kind of funny because uh but like uh this place where i live i love it but you know it's like i thought it'd be quiet it's not quiet i thought we'd be on the back and you know the rain well no it leaks so you know it, all the any rose colored glasses any beer goggles they're gone now they're probably already gone but that might have been your experience the last couple weeks part of it just i think in every way now neptune's just going along and um it's um kind of square in the moon too uh the sun too uh, it was only a few days ago so that was big so it could have been like in the last even week just something goes that you held dear now when you get the pluto involved here the judgment uh, that thing held dear can be that dark family secret or you wanted to believe the goodness of something and it was proven something else you know um but this could be like a moment of clarity that's like a, a snap a snap of reality coming to us um and then with the high priestess representing the moon it's just in Gemini, where the north node's at one degree, too, where we started. Um, Mars just coming off of that, and then we have the bowl uh, chart, really bowl of planets uh, on the uh, transit there, moving around right now. And I was just thinking at some point it'll be like a bucket chart when the moon gets far enough over to be a bucket. It already is, if we were to count, like, Charon and stuff. But... Um, do maybe we could take a hold of the moon do something different was my thought um so with the sagittarius energy um already pre-shuffled three of wands <laughs> so uh mars is there uh and this is uh looking for ships to come in this is looking for stuff this is fire energy also i think uh, with the three of wands too you always got to remember if it's uh if you just take away uh looking for love or looking for this reason where I would be looking for love I always think it'd be a cool name for a dating site 301 stereo uh, dating um, you know it's also a lot of action you know it's really gearing up for action um, and I think it's true like Mars is just kicking ass right now and it's tr therefore it's triggering all kinds of stuff I'm gonna say watch Mars if you want to know a little bit about stroke my opinion watch what Mars is doing in your chart wherever your stuff is and just Google, uh oh, here it comes, it's gonna, uh, I'm gonna sextile my so-and-so, it's gonna square my such Google or YouTube, and plenty of good stuff. And you'd be amazed uh, with that a little bit, how much you'll get um, just from that. Because Mars is always about um, doing stuff, uh, getting stuff done, you know, your will, action. Five of Swords here, we have this, um, Oh, you know, I want to call it a clusterfuck, but the magician, judgment, the empress, and the devil, this is all in Capricorn. So, five of swords, what we're getting here. Uh, now, I'm thinking with this five of swords, this is the magician, you know, uh, Mercury. Mercury's coming through here. It's been in cohorts with Mars, and it's whispering bad things and gossip. I'm not saying you are, but it's the energy of it. I believe, I believe, I believe Mars is, that's why I say watch Mars. Mars is on a mission for us now. It, hopefully we're, we're aware and we're using it for the good. 
If not, it'll use us somehow, and it'll end up bringing in what's for the good. It may not be what we want, but uh, it may not be if we intend it, but we could be able to try, right? But the Five of Swords is just kicking up some shit, man. Negativity and that kind of thing. And I just think that's what that is. It's like a dissatisfaction, negativity, uh, doubt, suspicion, um, these kind of things going on with this uh, Capricorn energy. And then in Aquarius, the Five of Swords. Wow. And, and the, he's looking right back at the, uh, the Seven of Swords. I mean, the dreaded Seven of Swords. Uh, He's looking kind of at the Five of Swords there. So it's like in Aquarius, it's saying, well, um, you can sit there and worry about it. You know, I'm going to take these swords and skedaddle. Because, <laughs> you know, the Seven of Swords is opportunity. It's an opportunist. It's kind of what this represents, an opportunist. Which is not always a bad thing, you know. Um, it it's, uh, depends on if you're doing it for the greatest good or for some selfish reason. Uh, but it's also strategic thinking. And I'm very much thinking with this Five of Swords strategic thinking, guys. It's like I really got a feeling about Mercury and uh, uh, Mars, what they're up to. And so obviously watch Mercury, too. You know, watch Mercury anyway, you know. Mercury's the one that you, goes everywhere, you know. Um, so you're going to get a little bit of everything you follow Mercury. Now, we're looking at Pisces here. God, how, how wonderful. The Six of Cups and the Pisces energy. I've had, it's my seventh house. Uh, since uh, it went in in like 2012 for real into um, Pisces, uh, I've been like to search for the soulmate. That's 100% what that is. It's like now that Neptune's direct, um, as uh, the rose-colored glasses come off, may not mean that the search for the soulmate comes off. may not mean that your soulmate comes off. If you're with your soulmate, then it's just going to be good. Um, but that's energy there of the nostalgia. And it's like I said with the three of one. It doesn't have to be about looking for something. It can be about action, taking action. We, you know, uh, here this is about feeling really good. Six of cups, you know. Uh, emotionally really breaking free if you're in like a five of cups energy think about it. when you go to six of cups it's like a world of fucking difference it's like it's like all of a sudden you're like oh yeah just playing in the field with the flowers and the sandbox and everything is good and Uranus and Taurus here guys pulling through with the ace of swords Uranus um, is really kicking up all kind of shit I got a T-square, it's opposite my Venus and square uh, Saturn. And I said I'd talk about that, so it's square Saturn. So that's mainly where the action is. I told you that you've got Pluto quick kicking up some shit. That's a little subtle, could be, uh, you know, something kind of like that. The feelings, this is talk here. This is uh, some communication. This is insight. Um, this could even be you in response, setting boundaries. Um, telling the truth, this is the truth coming in, this is the truth being demanded by you, delivered by you, here's the truth, I demand the truth, give me the truth, that kind of energy. Um, and this is the thing with Uranus, it's like, well, I think it's more like the tower. It's like uh, Uranus transits uh, brings shit down, you know. It's a dread, you don't want Uranus going through your seventh house, you better have a strong marriage. If you're married you know it just doesn't mean you're going to be divorced it just means boy it's going to apply the pressure there and that's what this square is doing it's my third it's uh my uh, fifth uh and uh, ninth house uh si sixth and ninth house in my church how it's hitting me uh, a lot about daily routine and spiritual matters ninth house matters big sign so wherever it is for you it's just putting a square on that quadrant that's what a square is. It's encompassing three. It's encompassing three uh, signs. So, uh, oftentimes, in the, if you were born in Sweden or something, it, it might be also three houses as well. Um, or if you go by uh, whole houses. So, now finally, let's look at the cutting edge here of the bowl, uh, heading into the eleventh house. The Nine of Pentacles, wow, a Gemini represented by the lovers. So, um, let me say, I gotta say, we, I do have Ten of Cups on the bottom of the deck. I gotta count because I didn't see it. 
kind of made me aware of it. I gotta think that's what a lot of us are interested in. If you're here, if you're watching you now, uh, reading like this, you know, if you're looking for uh, the, the, the one. And um, I don't necessarily see the one coming in here, um, but I see like a preparation, you preparing. You are looking, you know, and what do you say about three of wands? I mean, you're getting, if not looking, you're getting more active, like coming out of your cave, wanting to get out, wanting to do things. Um, there's this big bump in the road here that's sorting through. I think a lot of people, I talk to a lot of people, I can't like say anything, but I wouldn't. But, you know, there's a lot of this stuff going on. Family members and lovers and friends and uh, it's this, it, it's all this, the transits for sure. Cluedo, like I said, you know, taking those rose colored glasses off. But now what we end up with the cutting edge, that's all about being a happy bachelor which is about being self-fulfilled, self-contained, grounded, um, independent, and responsible, kind of like Saturn's boy or Saturn's girl. So, um, there you go. And you know, I could break this down more by rising sign <clears throat> and discuss it. So I'm gonna see what I think as we go through this, but anybody watch all the way through, let me know what you, think I appreciate it do like if you think uh, uh, anywhere you can share this any platform please do and if you haven't do subscribe I want to get to that 1,000 and start doing this live and I think that would be a lot more fun because then if you got on here and said hey Dave how about me I got Venus and such and such on such a degree and then as I'm going say, oh yeah well you're uh, you're golden or you're fucked <laughs>